is written in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. In the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation. As I have already written briefly, in reading this, then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was made known to people, which was made known to people, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty God and Father, we thank you for counting us amongst the living this day. On this last Sunday of the year 2023, we can only but say thank you for your grace. Father, we beseech you, consecrate this hour and involve your children with your holy presence. May our speaking and hearing of your word and all we do here be guided by your spirit. Take away any barriers, take away any strongholds, take away any distractions, and grant that the purpose for your word be accomplished in our lives. We offer our prayers through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. How can you be very ungrateful? Have you not discovered that I am the most important person here? I am the one who helps you to see. In fact, I am the one that makes you see how wonderful God has made you. You can see the beautiful creation of God, mountains and all you see is because of me. Don't be stupid, Mr. I. Am I not the one that carries you and go places? Have you forgotten so soon that without me, you just be useless? Look at people that are currently. None of you will exist if I were not there. To help you talk and express yourself. To eat and to keep you alive, said Mr. Mao. Then who takes the food and puts for you to chew? Ask behind. And the quarrel continues. On and on, with each part trying to prove its worth above the other. Then comes a gentle voice from the mind. If you are too important, why don't you step out and live independently? You have to save the energy and know that we are all part of one body. It is from here that we are called to meditate on this last Sunday of the year and the month in Christ, we all are one. Please, can you tell your neighbor, in Christ, we all are one. In Christ, we all are one. Dearly beloved, in Christ Jesus, our text is a practical teaching about God's plan for salvation and the unity of all believers. Paul calls it a mystery because in it, it illustrates a what? How wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love of God is, which sometimes human minds cannot comprehend fully. The beginning sentence of our text for this 
to reason, indicates that a discussion has been ongoing. This discussion is the reconciliation between Jews and Gentiles, effected by Christ. Confer Ephesians 2, verse 11 to 22. It is as a result of this reconciliation that Paul was chosen, that Paul was commissioned to make known the secret and to cause this reconciliation to be, effect to be effected. It is as a result of this reconciliation that Paul is in prison and refers to himself as the prisoner of Christ Jesus. Acts 19, 15, Acts 22, 21, and 22. Before now, or before the coming of Christ, or before the revelation of this mystery, the Jewish people had a complex relationship with the Gentiles. Different Jewish groups and individuals portrayed varying odd attitudes towards the Gentiles. Remember that reading through the Old Testament, Jews often express a sense of distinction, a people chosen by God. With a special covenant, this led to a sense of exclusivity and separation from other nations. Most often, the Old Testament portrays the Gentiles with negative connotations such as oppressors, enemies. A Jew would not even attain the same party with a Gentile, thoughtless of eating from the same table, and worse, calling them members of one body. Overall, among other things, the only condition that would permit Gentiles to share in what belonged to the Jews was circumcision of the flesh. Confer Genesis 17. But when, when, the, when with the coming of Jesus, a new understanding of God's salvation plan is revealed. Paul continues with an undoubtful statement which stresses from verse 2 to 5 that he was given the responsibility to minister to the Gentiles, to unveil the depths of God's love to the Gentiles, a task that was given to him not because of his works, but by grace. This task was revealed to him by God alone. This task he called a mystery which was not known by previous generations before Christ. Then in verse 6, Paul gets to the main subject of his message. He unveils the mystery or the secret of his message. The mystery or the secret which was not known he brings to us this morning. The first thing he said is that Jacob's are heirs together with Israel. Dear household of faith. Each time we hear of heirs or inheritance in relation to Israel, it is referring to the promised land. The land God promised Abraham to give his descendants. When God took Israel out of Egypt, it was to fulfill this promise, the promise of a land. To them, this land is just the Lord and, and no other nation. And so they had to fight, they had to fight as many battles as possible to consolidate this land. It is this inheritance that Gentiles are called to receive a portion of it. What a message radical in the ears of a Jew. What a message of impossibility in the ears of a Gentile. But in Jesus, there is a new inheritance, more blessed and more glorious than this. It is this inheritance that you and I will inherit through faith in Jesus Christ. Secondly, we are members together of one body. Someone has said that God called Israel sons does not mean other men were not part of his creation and plan. 
but that God chose Israel to accomplish his plan. End of quote. I think this statement is true and should be trusted. It is as a result of this that Isaiah had prophesied, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Isaiah 49 verse 6b. But this was only revealed in Christ when he confirms in John chapter 10 verse 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. This is the mystery that was revealed to Paul. This is the mystery that we are learning today. That Gentiles are part of the body of Christ together with the Jews. Thirdly, that Gentiles will be sharers together in the promise. All the promises meant to Israel through Abraham, or better still, through Noah, or through the prophets, and fulfilled in Christ Jesus, or are yet to fulfill, are also for Gentiles. The promise of salvation, the promise of a new life, and more. In summary, Paul is saying there is a mutual exchange of blessings between Jews and Gentiles. May God's promises not pass off by in the new year 2024 that is coming in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, dear household of faith, not the glory of this mystery revealed to us is that it goes beyond the salvation plan of God, which is for all humanity, to the fact that we all are part of a single body. Yes, we are all one in Christ. You and I and the multitude of all believers are part of a single body with Christ at the head. The Christian family with its diverse nature is united as part of a single body. No matter the nationality, no matter the race, the tribe, the village, and whatsoever we can think of, Christ is our head. Call him head of the church. And we are all parts of the body. No matter the body parts that it is, no matter the name given to the parts, no matter its function, no matter its location, no matter its structure or its shape, all parts are as important as one can imagine. They are as important as the world's importance. And like these parts, that is how you and I are united and spiritually important in the body of Christ. Yes, dear people of God, having a careful study of the body and the functioning of the different parts will help us appreciate our heads more. It teaches us of a deep love that breaks barriers of hatred, that breaks barriers of strongholds, and ushers us into a new level of love for one another. It teaches that there is no one that is made of a finer clay than others. Take any part out of the body, it immediately loses its value. That is the mystery revealed to us today. In Christ, we all are one. It teaches of the necessity of living together, calling each other my brother, my sister, and breaking barriers of ethnicity, tribes, languages, family, social status, cultural heritage, nationality, to see and consider each other as part of the same body. Do you and I know that when we move around by biting, planning evil, and causing hatred to one another, it is like the hand taking a needle and piercing the eye? Do you and I know that when we insult, when we maltreat, and this dehumanize those working under us, be it drivers, be it housekeepers,
keepers. Be it security men. It is like the mouth telling the legs, you are very, very stupid. You are good for nothing. Do you know that when we withhold forgiveness, when we fail to reconcile, it is like the mouth telling the stomach, I will stab you to death. Why then do we call among ourselves? Dearly beloved in the Lord, we have over preached the message of unity. We have read as many times as possible. We have heard the message of unity, the message of love, the message of living together. It is time to put it into practice. At all costs, strive to break the barriers and show love to someone. Can you tell your neighbor, show love to someone? Show love to someone. Although the gospel of Jesus has established a spiritual union, said a scholar, all believers in one spiritual church, forming one body in Christ Jesus, as long as the earth lasts, diversities in cultures, in nationality, in social status, in educational levels, in riches, in talent will exist like it or not. But in fulfilling God's purpose at our various corners, know that you and I are just part of a large entity with Christ at the head. Yes, dear household of faith, it is the end of the year and we look forward to begin a new year. While banks and business people are trying to balance their accounts and their balance sheets. While people are going headers together, trying to put things in order, trying to buy the latest fashion and to equip the house with the latest furniture. You and I are called on this last Sunday to have a cross-examination of our Christian life from January to this moment. We are called to examine our life of love. Have we examined, have we looked at each other as brothers and as sisters? Or we have uplifted barriers, we have uplifted strongholds which we cannot show love to one another. It is a call for us to come back to the word of God. In Christ, we all are one. Therefore, as Christ break all barriers to fulfill the mystery that was and is God's perfect plan, to make us heirs together with Israel, to make us members of one body, to make us sharers of God's promises in Christ. We have to arise. Peace Moniko, arise. May we break the barriers we have put in place. Step out of our comfort zones and just tell somebody, I love you. I have forgiven you. You are my brother. You are my sister. Because now, you and I know in Christ we all are one. To God be the glory. Amen.